Welcome to today's seminar on the subject of AAV capsid evolution, a method that has emerged as a powerful tool to discover new AAV capsids with favorable properties for gene delivery. In this seminar, we will first focus on background knowledge about adeno-associated virus. Then we will discuss various methods for AAV capsid library generation and packaging. Finally, we will close the seminar out by examining data produced from in vivo screening conducted at VectorBuilder, followed by validation of candidate capsids identified by screening. The AAV genome is extremely compact, around 4.7 KB in length, and encodes two major genes with multiple open reading frames, rep and cap. Different variations in splicing and transcription start sites of these ORFs result in different size protein products. The focus of our discussion today centers on the CAP gene and its associated proteins, VP1, 2, and 3. The CAP gene plays a pivotal role in the assembly of AAV particles. VP1, 2, and 3 are distinct capsid proteins generated through start codon selection during translation. These capsid proteins self-assemble into icosahedral structures forming the outer shell of the AAV virion. VP3 is the predominant capsid protein, constituting the majority of the capsid and providing structural integrity. VP1 and 2, on the other hand, play essential roles in viral infectivity by mediating interactions with host cell receptors and participating in endosomal escape during cellular entry. The intricate interplay among the capsid proteins not only determines the viral tropism, but also influences the efficiency of gene delivery in various therapeutic applications. Understanding the molecular mechanisms governing the AAV capsid assembly is crucial for optimizing viral vectors and enhancing their performance in biomedical applications. AAV capsids employ diverse mechanisms to enter host cells, the primary method involves receptor-mediated endocytosis, where AAV capsids bind to specific cell surface receptors, initiating a cascade of events that leads to internalization. This mechanism often relies on interactions with heparin sulfate proteoglycans and various co-receptors. Subsequently, the endocytic vesicle containing the AAV capsid undergoes intracellular trafficking, ultimately reaching endosomal compartments. Here, the virus must navigate through the endosomal membrane to release its genetic cargo into the nucleus. After release, the capsid undergoes uncoding and follows a series of steps that ultimately lead to gene expression. Alternatively, the capsid can undergo degradation through the proteasome. The composition, properties, and structure of the AAV capsid determines the tropism of a given AAV serotype dictating what cell types the capsid can bind to and express its genetic information. An AAV serotype refers to a distinct variant of the adeno-associated virus characterized by differences in the amino acid sequence of its capsid proteins. These serotypes exhibit unique tropism and transduction efficiencies, influencing their suitability for specific gene therapy applications. Certain serotypes like AAV2 and AAV9 have a broad tropism and can infect a wide variety of tissues and cell types. On the other hand, certain serotypes have narrow tropism and can only infect a small subset of cells and tissues. AAVPHP.eb and AAV2.7M8 are examples of serotypes with narrower tropism. Interestingly, these serotypes were derived through methods that will be discussed further in depth in this presentation. The structure of the AAV capsid consists of 60 protein subunits organized into icosahedral symmetry. These protein subunits, known as capsid proteins, assemble to form a viral capsid that encapsulates the viral genome. The AAV capsid exhibits distinct constant and variable regions that play crucial roles in its structure and function. These constant regions, found throughout the capsid, maintain structural stability and are essential for the overall integrity of the viral particle. These regions often serve as anchors for the assembly of the capsid proteins, contributing to the icosahedral symmetry of the AAV structure. In contrast, the variable regions are exposed on the surface of the capsid and show significant diversity among different AAV serotypes. 
These variable regions are involved in interactions with host cell receptors and immune responses, influencing the virus's tropism and ability to evade host defenses. The AAV capsid can be evolved through directed evolution, a powerful technique that involves iterative rounds of genetic modification and selection to enhance specific properties of a viral vector. This process typically begins with the generation of a diverse library of AAV capsid variants, often achieved by introducing random mutations or incorporating sequences from other serotypes. This library is then subjected to selective pressure, such as exposure to target cells or in, in vivo environments. To identify variants with improved transduction efficiency, altered tropism, or enhanced resistance to immune responses. The selected capsid variants serve as the basis for the next round of evolution, and this iterative cycle continues until a desired vector with optimized characteristics is obtained. Directed evolution has proven instrumental in tailoring AAV vectors for various gene therapy applications allowing researchers to fine-tune the capsid's features to meet specific therapeutic goals while minimizing undesirable side effects. There are three different methods of packaging AAV capsid libraries, the two-plasmid method and the two variations of the three-plasmid method. In the two-plasmid method, the AAV vector genome and the adenovirus packaging plasmid, which carries the essential viral genes, are co-transfected into host cells. This approach relies on the host machinery to replicate and package the AAV genome into viral capsids. In the three-plasmid approach, the AAV rep gene is provided on a third supplemental plasmid, allowing for the modified cap gene to be expressed with a selection marker or by itself. Regardless of the packaging method chosen, the choice for how to generate your AAV cap gene library is an important factor in dictating the success of a given experiment. Established methods for generating AAV capsid libraries encompass diverse approaches, including the rational design of AAV capsids, error-prone PCR targeting the AAV cap gene and its segments, DNA family shuffling, synthetic shuffling, in silico design, and random peptide display. Delving into the relevant publications that have played a pivotal role in establishing and applying these methodologies can provide a more in-depth understanding of their principles and applications. Surface exposed tyrosine residues on the AAV2 capsid undergo phosphorylation by EGFR protein tyrosine kinases during trafficking, resulting in ubiquitination and subsequent proteasomal degradation. Researchers found that altering these residues on AAV2 significantly enhances its effectiveness in gene therapy. By replacing specific tyrosine residues on the virus's surface with phenylalanine, they successfully enhanced its capacity to deliver therapeutic genes into cells. Particularly noteworthy is the quadruple mutant AAV2 vector, exhibiting an impressive 24-fold increase in efficacy compared to the original virus. Consequently, the AAV2 quad YF serotype introduced by this study has become widely utilized in laboratory studies. These breakthroughs were made possible through the rational design of AAV capsid libraries and subsequent testing to evaluate the improved delivery efficacy and potency of these design variants. DNA family shuffling is another technique used to generate AAV capsid libraries. In this method, the cap genes of various AAV serotypes are digested, followed by reannealing through homology, resulting in the generation of new serotypes that are hybrids of their parental serotypes. The resulting capsid libraries generated by DNA family shuffling offer a diverse repertoire of AAV variants each possessing unique combinations of genetic traits derived from multiple serotypes. The intentional integration of diverse genetic elements through DNA family shuffling has endowed AAVDJ with an enhanced tropism, increased transduction efficiency, and improved resistance to ant neutralizing antibodies. This variant was discovered through iterative processes of exposure to target cells with and without the addition of the selective pressure of intravenous immunoglobulin. Overall, DNA family shuffling has served as a powerful tool in serotype discovery, 
relying on the natural AAV sequences to generate functional capsids. Another variant of this method, deemed synthetic shuffling, utilizes the same fundamental principles as DNA family shuffling. However, in this technique, a more targeted and precise approach is adopted, focusing exclusively on specific variable regions for library generation. Instead of shuffling the entire CAP gene, synthetic shuffling strategically hones in on particular regions that known to influence the capsid's functional attributes, such as receptor binding and cellular entry. By selectively manipulating these critical regions, synthetic shuffling allows for the creation of AAV variants with finely tuned characteristics, optimizing their performance for specialized applications in gene therapy. In silico design stands out as another powerful technique employed for the generation of AAV capsid libraries. Unlike experimental methods like DNA family shuffling, in silico design operates in the realm of computational biology, leveraging advanced algorithms and simulations to predict and engineer AAV capsid variants with desired properties. This technique involves the virtual manipulation of genetic sequences and structural components to optimize capsid performance for specific therapeutic goals. One example of this deemed ancestral reconstruction utilizes bioinformatics to trace common ancestors among AAV serotypes in order to determine novel serotypes shared by a common ancestor. In recent years, machine learning has become more popular in identifying new serotypes, like in this publication in Science, where researchers created a comprehensive map of the AAV2 capsids genetic variations and identified a gene in the VP1 region that hinders AAV production. Additionally, the study successfully designed a targeted capsid library using algorithmic methods, showcasing the effectiveness of systematic mutagenesis and machine-guided protein engineering in decoding complex genomes. The final method for library generation we'll discuss is random peptide display. In this method, Peptides of various lengths are inserted into variable regions of the AAV capsid. This technique could potentially allow for the generation of AAV serotypes with different tissue tropism, as the randomly displayed peptides may alter the ability of the AAV capsid to interact with specific cell surface receptors. The randomness in peptide insertion creates a diverse array of capsid variants each potentially endowed with unique targeting capabilities. This versatility in targeting is particularly advantageous for applications requiring tailored tissue specificity. Notably, advancements in the understanding of viral host interactions have facilitated the identification of key motifs and sequences that govern cellular entry and transduction efficiency. By strategically incorporating peptides into these variable regions, researchers can modulate AAV tropism, potentially optimizing gene delivery to specific tissues or cell types. In conclusion, the diverse methods employed in AAV library construction, ranging from random peptide display and in silico design to DNA family shuffling, rational design and synthetic shuffling, underscore the dynamic and innovative nature of AAV engineering. Each approach brings unique advantages and challenges, catering to specific goals in the pursuit of enhanced gene delivery vectors. At Vector Builder, we can employ a variety of these methods to help researchers discover novel AAV variants for enhanced gene delivery. Let's take a look at some data for random peptide display libraries generated at Vector Builder. Researchers can utilize different degenerate codon strategies for mutational library generation, including NNN and NNK, which are the most popular, as these strategies code for all 20 amino acids. As seen from the data on the right, for an 11 mer peptide library generated at VectorBuilder with an NNK strategy, where the K represents the G or T nucleotide, our library of 33 nucleotides has a near even distribution across all sites. Further, this unbiased distribution of nucleotides results in an unbiased distribution of amino acids in the plasmid library. This is demonstrated in the two data sets shown with the actual distribution of amino acids 
mirroring the theoretical distribution for NNK mutagenesis strategies. Upon successful construction of the plasmid library, the subsequent step involves its encapsulation into a primary viral library, wherein only variants capable of efficient packaging are selectively retained. This rigorous curation process ensures that the ensuing primary viral library comprises only those variants conducive to packaging, setting the stage for a more streamlined and effective downstream analysis. Following this, the formation of a secondary library further refines the selection, optimizing the pool of variants for subsequent experimentation. The figures presented demonstrate the presence of an even distribution of reads across diverse peptides integrated onto the surface of the AAV capsids. Due to the nature of random peptide display, it is inherent that certain variants may not be packageable given the unpredictable nature of the randomly inserted peptides. The structural constraints imposed by the three-dimensional configurations of the AAV capsid may influence the packaging efficiency of specific variants. Consequently, the steric hindrance or interference caused by randomly introduced peptides may render certain capsid configurations less amenable to proper encapsulation. At Vector Builder, we have found that as the length of the peptide displayed on the capsid surface increases, the number of packageable variants decreases as a total percentage of the whole pool. The choice of variable regions for where the peptide is inserted also impacts the fraction of variants that can be packaged. The amino acids and their sequence can also have an impact on AAV packaging as well. As shown from this figure, hydrophobic and negative amino acids tend to be less packageable than positive and polar uncharged amino acids. Altogether, this data indicates that VectorBuilder can produce diverse, homogeneous libraries that are capable of in vitro and in vivo screening to discover new variants. When preparing sequencing libraries after screening your AAV capsid libraries, the choice between RNA and DNA preparation methods becomes a pivotal decision. Each approach has its own set of advantages and considerations. RNA library preparation is suited for capturing the transcriptome, which will only identify variants where the transgene is expressed. On the other hand, DNA library preparation offers a broader scope, enabling the characterization of all AAV variants that are able to enter cells through PCR of the AAV genomic DNA. Both methods have their advantages and disadvantages, and researchers must choose the approach best suited for their project. After choosing which method is best suited for your project, Vector Builder can conduct in vitro and in vivo screening for your library in a variety of systems. Shown here are the results from two such screens. The first experiment explored novel random peptide display variants that were injected into mouse eyes. In the next experiment, a different library was introduced via tail vein injection. Both methods demonstrated high reproducibility between biological replicates. In addition, Vector Builder offers the capability to conduct cross-species comparisons of the screening results. Illustrated on the left is a Venn diagram depicting the overlap of the most enriched peptides identified in mice, while the diagram on the right highlights the shared enriched peptides between mice and non-human primates. This comparative analysis not only provides insights into species-specific responses, but also unveils commonalities that may have implications for translational research. By delineating the converging and diverging trends in peptide enrichment across different species, researchers gain a nuanced understanding of the AAV capsid's performance in diverse biological contexts. Cross-species comparisons are important for refining the design and application of AAV libraries, ensuring their adaptability and efficacy across a spectrum of preclinical and clinical models. The choice of variable region on the AAV capsid also has a large impact on its ability to target different tissues. In this figure, four different sublibraries were co-injected into mice. Each sublibrary consisted of peptides displayed in variable region A, variable region B, or both variable region A and B. Each sublibrary demonstrated different tissue representation when comparing the spinal cord, liver, and brain 
indicating that the choice of subregion will contribute to how successful a given library will perform. One way to verify that a given random peptide display library screen has been conducted successfully is to look for the presence of stop codons in tissues. Stop codons will be depleted in tissues compared to the library as their presence would produce an AAV capsid that would not be able to assemble properly or enter tissues. The presence of stop codons in tissues indicates cross-packaging between AAV serotypes, which is not a desirable product when screening, as it would skew the true results. Similar to how certain amino acids are differentially enriched in packaged virus compared to the original plasmid library, amino acids are also differentially enriched in specific tissues compared to the packaged virus library. This data can lead to useful insights about how to rationally design peptides for your target tissues or identify novel serotypes with desirable properties. Following bioinformatics screening of the library, Vector Builder can provide individual HIP validation. In this figure, novel variants identified from screening were individually packaged and tested against their parental capsid. These novel variants either resulted in enhanced or depleted transgene expression in the target tissue, indicating that the parental serotype can be modified for gene delivery. After identification of these variants, Vector Builder can also provide in vivo validation using fluorescence microscopy as well as other methods. These variants have resulted in increased transgene expression in the spinal cord and brain. Thank you for your attention in today's seminar. And if you would like to contact Vector Builder to find out how we can partner with you to help build your next AAV capsid library, please scan here to get started today.